Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Simple Mustic. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. So it's been quite a wonderful day today. We did a trip out to the Bluestone Falls and a little of rappelling and battling mosquitoes. <laughs> uh, we had a good time, so we're doing our video late in the afternoon for a change. But anyway, it's uh, more string theory stuff. So this time we're going to be playing um, with more fibery things and we're going to be dipping them in paint as well. And I was just thinking that maybe I can do a little bit of everything. So maybe we'll dunk it in green. I'm just using my usual um, Amsterdam acrylic paints and some open uh, fluid acrylics. So, okay. And I'm wearing gloves because uh, this is a messy process, so. And I'm scraping a lot of the paint off. And we're just gonna sort of dribble it all over the place. And maybe we'll do some yellow on this end. Just dunk it in there. You'll find your own process here. I'm just sort of you know, messing about until I figure something will work. And you have to, you do have to scrape off quite a bit of the paint. And I'm wearing gloves because I think very likely you're going to have to squeeze it a lot of it out. And then you can just place it wherever. And it'll be sort of like watercolor as well. I've got a couple of examples for you. Okay, we'll just dunk that in here. Try and control the mess a little bit. Just stirring seems to work. Now these fibers, uh, it's just a natural wool, I think, and um, I haven't dipped them in acrylic paint yet, so they're not as hard as the other ones that we're working with, which is fine. We're just going to get rid of some of the paint. And of course, we would get a knot. That's okay. We're just going to squeeze it out. Isn't that interesting? The knot tied itself. <laughs> the universe is working with us today. <laughs> well, it certainly was down at the creek and um, Bluestone Creek. Try and control a mess as far as you can. So let's just keep it simple. Now, as well as uh, talking about string today, I'm going to keep mentioning things about composition. So, you know, you can push stuff around. Um, good composition is a, a placement of the items. So our items today, of course, are our strings. So manipulate them to where you're happy since we don't have that many on the plate this time I can just do what I want with them to some degree little loops and we probably have a good amount of um, paint on there and I can take my gloves off um, barrier cream works too I, I would recommend it I'm using, um, this is a multi-media, uh, Canson multimedia paper, so it's really tough stuff. I was working with Bond, even though it's a good um, quality paper, it was uh, coming apart where it was wettest, so, so I have some interesting collage pieces, but it didn't really work as far as uh, these wet strings. Now, in the previous video, um, and Josh will post that, 
we pulled out the strings, so that might be an interesting thing to do now. But because everything is so wet, I'm just going to grab it with a paper towel. And then we'll just see if we get some effects here by pulling it out. And I'm just going to, what am I going to do with it? Um, paper towel. <laughs> because it's quite soggy, right? So and you don't want it all over your hands. See, and the paper is holding up, so we're in good shape. Okay, well, a lot sitting and doing. Uh, this is sort of the result I want to show you. So these strings were dipped in greens and reds and some of the yellows. And I think I had, um, I think it's this one here. It's just a folk art metallic, and I think this is... Um, I think it's copper by the look of it. Okay, so there's some other layers underneath here which you can see, and some wrinkles. <laughs> but look at how beautiful that is. That would make a great background for something figurative, maybe. And speaking of backgrounds, I did this piece, and I I did a. a a transfer of text, I think, from an Oprah Winfrey magazine. So if you read the magazine, it's very useful. You can then do some transfers with it. Nice magazine, by the way. Anyway, um, and then, you know, I just kept going with other layers of string, and I kept, again, these are the ones with the uh, liquid. I dipped them in blue and probably some white and then we just put that on there and printed it. So that's what's possible. Okay, let's pull that string. And see if we can get some nice effects. Woohoo. And it's also um, on the plate, it's picking up some of the other colors we put on the strings. So a secondary interesting thing happening here. Your, this uh, multimedia paper is quite nice. It's not getting too whacked out of shape. Make sure you're printing your edges as far as it goes because all you've got on here is string. But there might be some edges to worry about. And you actually get a really nice watercolor effect. Ooh. So there. And I'll probably just let that dry and we're going to continue to build up layers. So here's where some of the string was. And then here, I'm not sure the camera is picking all that up. And whatever a uh, liquid paint is on there, you can just maybe let it run a little bit. You could probably spray it too and let it run, but then that would make the paper really soggy. So we'll just put this aside for a bit. We're on our way to Bluestone Falls and we just thought we'd have a quick little break and hide of comfort here out in the bush. So we're going to start with some blue on this plate. Just a little bit of Prussian blue. And I think, what the heck is this one? Um, brilliant blue. It's okay. It's somewhere between Thalo and Cerulean. So we'll transfer a little bit of um, typography here. Now, when you're doing a transfer, it's wise to do a fairly dark tone. And you need just enough paint and not too much. And I don't know if we want the hands in there. I'm not sure that would show up, but I'll give it a shot. So just rub that 
the burin helps here. You just want to be consistent. Oh, the type came out beautifully. Okay. So it'll be a little bit like this one that I showed you earlier, where there's a type layer, except this time it's a blue layer. Okay, so then uh, we're just going to let that dry and then we'll do a release coat. Sometimes uh, all you need to do is print it as is, but um, just on the safe side, we're going to let that dry. So it helps to have this one. I'm just going to use the strings we have. It's got plenty of stuff on it. I think we could use a little bit of yellow. And I'm just going to rub it, mess around with it a little bit. You'll sort of find your own way with this. Just be playful, um, just relax, and you know, think of stuff and just let it happen. Don't get too. Um, you know, that it has to be something or it has to look like something. That playful attitude is really what creates a lot of breakthroughs. Just uh, experiment and see what comes of it. Okay, so we can't use that first sheet. We'll have to do another one. Let's try some oriental paper. Um, the oriental paper has long fibers. And uh, I've got a lineup area here. And we'll probably need another sheet. Let's just use this one. And that's coming through pretty good. So this is a black and white sheet that we had. And we're just adding a bit of color. So that's all to the good. And maybe a little paper towel. You can damp it off. And it's looking pretty interesting already. Certainly my black and white sheet's interesting. Okay, we'll keep playing with that one. And your imagination will just go wild. Like, what does it remind you of? Are we looking at something very playful? I think that's what it seems to me, something like a flying balloon or something. And here's our sheet so far. Now if you turn that upside down, that pattern might be interesting the other way. As long as you'll line it up a little bit. Still lots of dampness there. And as you build these layers, um, look for some things you can capitalize on. Okay, let's look at it in terms of composition. Now, when I'm looking at composition, I often look at weight. Where is it heaviest? In this case, probably this orientation. So you look for weight because that helps ground your picture plane. And then you look for interest as to, you know, what kind of things would you have needed to move something. I think it's all looking pretty good. It's playful, it's active. The colors, you know, there's lots of white areas. You know, your eye needs places to rest. Those are the things you look for in composition as well. A little bit of texture. So far, so good. So we just have to remember that orientation. Let's try this one. Now our weight was there. Let's repeat that idea and we just line up as best we can. Yeah. 
and it is printing. See, now we're getting some details on that sort of watercolor base. Let's have a look at that. Right here and here. So we're getting a little bit more. Okay, put that aside for now. This is dry now and uh, we can do a release coat. I'm going to do a release coat uh, with uh, the warm gray. And our um, transparent red iron oxide. This is one of my favorite colors. If you haven't got this yet, you know, be sure and, and just, you know, it's warm, it's almost a yellow, and yet it has that sort of glow to it. We're going to get a slightly neutral tone here. I'm just going to rub it on. Remember your release coat um, has to be transparent. You should see the type through this release coat. So brayer until you see the and this is Amsterdam paint, so you can't be here all afternoon with it. And the effect I'm trying for is sort of an antique, you know, like an illuminated manuscript. And it might be very helpful to have a, a letter. Now, I'm not sure this is dry, but okay. Now, if we luck out, now our good, um, I mean, you, you can see right through it, of course, but the, I printed it with the, the smooth side down to begin with, and then it bled through. So you could probably use both pages. And then this is what I did previously. And it's okay if it picks anything up. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's quite amazing. And I think we could probably repeat that and get some more on the next layer. This just amazes me. So we're getting the blue from the base and then the orange picked up the type. And then we have the string. Now isn't that fascinating? So I can't think of any other medium that is just so versatile. So gel printing is Definitely worthwhile. So I'm just rolling out the same color combination um, with that background. And see if we can pick up a little bit more of our uh, transfer. And I'm absolutely amazed with that piece. So let's see what happens with this one. Now, okay, so here again, the compositional situation. Where's the weight? I mean, is it just to show you? See how dark it is up there? So our weight is actually down here. So this is the orientation it should be. Otherwise, it looks unbalanced. And balance has a lot to do with composition. OK, let's try it this way. We got a little bit of a wrinkle. I don't think it'll break the paper, but we'll have to be careful with it. And it'll just add to that ancient document look, even if it does have a wrinkle or two. Yeah, make these kinds of accidents work for yourself. And 
we're not <laughs> we're not even picking it all up yet but again and here's what I mean about the red iron oxide that incredible glow that it gives and here we're you know we have all sorts of bits of type it's just amazing well I think we're really on a roll here Okay, so now um, with this one, we'll just set, leave that for a minute. I'm going to take this off. I think it will just sort of be um, like a remnant. I don't know if we need to let it dry. Maybe just a minute. Some people have... I should get a fan. I have some nice fans, actually. We had a professional Japanese artist come to Quenelle and he gave a seminar and uh, we had to make a fan. So we had to decorate a fan and he had a uh, gold leaf, like real gold leaf at the time. And I asked him, you know, is this real gold leaf? And he said, yes. <laughs> so I have a fan with a tiny bit of gold leaf that I was doing... Um, water lilies at the time and the centers have a little tiny bit of gold leaf in it. So I should bring that down and do some waving and get that dry. Maybe what we'll do is uh, Josh can put an interlude on. Uh, by the way, the uh, we're going to do some Instagram uh, footage of our little jaunt to the, the falls, uh, the Bluestone Falls, I guess, Bluestone Creek Falls, whatever they're called. And uh, it was really hot down there, and we had to, we tied a rope to one of the trees and had to rappel down. I've never done that before, but it worked. And then uh, Josh handed me off here and there just over the rocks. <laughs> what a riot. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll do some footage for Instagram and, um, and maybe our shorts too um, that we have on YouTube. So check them out. We do all sorts of crazy stuff. So we just now we just got to let that dry. So give us a second, and then um, we'll be right back. So I'm taking another sheet of paper um, and rather than working on one of the sheets we've been doing because I want to see how subtle this layer is. So we're just going to use white and not a lot of it. I've sort of got that thing under control now. And white particularly is good for pickup prints. As long as you make it not too thick, just take a little bit of it off. And I hope that you might not have anything, it might be just too obscured, but you don't know unless you try, right? So, uh, okay. Now we think we have one more string layer on there and try and pick up the rest of that type. Ooh. Now that is a lovely background for more string effects. You see just a few little remnants. Some of the wool here is picked up. That's quite lovely, and the colors are good. All right, well, let's let that dry. We're going to go back to this one here. And I think white's probably our best bet. Ever so slight. Just you know, We just want to release that last little layer. Mm. 
These are my 8x10 gel press plates. Sometimes working it a bit bigger, you don't get quite so precious. We talked about this, about being, you know, too controlling with your work. I kid you not, I had a student once who was uh, an oil painter. I was teaching an oil class at the time. And he held his brush so tightly, he had a death grip on his brush that the whites of his knuckles were showing. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, even Robert Bateman, who does all that wonderful work, he holds his brush like this long and he does a lot of abstract passages. So. Even uh, highly detailed um, magic realism, they don't paint that way. They hold their brushes back and they relax. And, and uh, the trick, I think, with that kind of thing is to do one brush stroke and then leave it alone. Don't go back and fiddle with it, right? <laughs> just, and then do the next brush stroke and leave it alone. I just want to see how that works. I want that last little piece to release. And of course we can always work back into it. I think it might need one more string layer anyway. And again, a really marvelous effect. Look at that, we're getting all our type that was left over. And it does have that feeling of a, an old um, piece of parchment that's deteriorated and somebody's discovered it in some cave or other. So, okay, so we're going to do a layer. I think back to our maybe blue again. I think blue would be nice. Just a touch of the Prussian blue. And I'm sort of going to leave the spots. I'm not going to worry too much about spots. And we're going to brayer off a lot of this because we want that layer to not be too dominant. And let's see if our, there might be a little bit of moisture left in some of the stuff. Now you can do um, spirals. Let's try maybe getting a little bit more involved in shapes. And it had a natural loop, so that works good. You can do grids, um, all manner of things, right? And you don't have to do a lot of the strings. Maybe a little thin guy. Let's roll it up. And see what comes of that. Okay, and we'll just use a paper to push it down. Now, I could go on and on all day, but this is the last layer, I promise you. <laughs> I'll leave the subtle one from now, but I'll, I'll work on it. Uh, maybe I'll post it to Instagram if I do some more work on it. That's handy. And uh, Instagram is funny because it speeds everything up. And they think I work really fast. Well, let's do some of the middle stuff here. All this new technology, I've had to figure out, you know, how to run computers and cameras and do videos and <laughs> climb mountains and... <laughs> <laughs> Jump from rock to rock. It's an exciting time in my life. Okay. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to hang on to this and we remove everything. Okay, if we pull that out, it just gives more character. And then we'll reprint. Oh, look at this. Now, isn't that amazing? You just get really get the strings and the little details. That's just phenomenal. And of course, you don't have to quit there, but we are going to quit for today. And uh, oh, no end of fun here at Shoreline Studio. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and uh, take care of yourselves and your families. Do join us again here soon. Uh, we post usually every Thursday. And, uh, you know, check out our Instagram and the um, stories that are also on YouTube. And for all our um, adventures out in the field. So, bye for now. <laughs>